so the topic I, w I wanted to talk uh, about today is inhaled treatment in uh, asthma and COPD, uh, which is a very important issue because uh, inhaled treatments are the cornerstones uh, of the treatments for these airways diseases because they allow the treatment to reach directly uh, its target with minimal uh, systemic exposure. So it increases uh, the benefit risk ratio. Uh, and the problem that uh, we know uh, these days about asthma and COPD is that despite having uh, many treatments, uh, we don't get the full effectiveness that we would like to have uh, in that uh, a lot of asthma patients are not controlled and a lot of COPD patients are still symptomatic. So this may have something to do with uh, wrong choices uh, that doctors uh, make when choosing uh, the inhaled treatments they deliver to the patient. And there are mainly two issues that are very important to consider is, uh, when, when doing our choices. The first one uh, is uh, the treatment, the pharmacological treatment, the pharmacological agent uh, that, that we choose. And the second one is the choice of the device. So we have many families, pharmacological families of agents, uh, long-acting B2-2 agonists, long-acting antimuscarinic agents and inhaled steroids mainly. And all these can be combined uh, in, in dual treatments, uh, LABA plus LAMA, ICS plus LABA or triple uh, treatments. And then we have many devices, uh, method dose inhalers, dry powder inhalers, breath actuated devices, soft mist inhalers, nebulizers, spacers, and whatever. So uh, it, it's quite difficult to find the right combination uh, of the right treatment with the right device for a given patient. Uh, but that's crucial to get the full effectiveness of the treatment. So I think that, that first of all, what we should do is uh, follow the guidelines that tell us that the cornerstone of asthma treatment is ICS and the cornerstone of COPD treatment is bronchodilators. And when we look at the practice surveys, uh, we, we see that definitely uh, people don't always follow uh, the guidelines. For example, there are many inhaled steroids prescribed to uh, COPD patients outside of their uh, indications. So uh, we should follow the guidelines and one very important step uh, to be able to follow the guideline is to make the right diagnosis because we have guidelines of, on asthma, we have guidelines on COPD, and now we have guidelines on ACOS, asthma COPD overlap syndrome, which is a mixture uh, of these two. Uh, so I think the, the most important is to find out when there is asthma and when there is COPD, and ACOS uh, should be diagnosed when we really don't know uh, what we have in front of us after having uh, proceeded to all the, the workup, uh, the diagnostic workup to make the differential diagnosis. Uh, and then uh, the final issue is after we have decided which pharmacological treatment we're going to prescribe uh, to find out what's the best device for this given patient. Uh, and this is sometimes a difficult choice, it takes time because uh, we have to teach the patient how to use the device, uh, check whether the device is properly used and recheck uh, very, very regularly and, and ensure that the patient likes the device which, he, which is crucial uh, for uh, adherence and proper use uh, of the device.